She seeks not her. Her, sleep thou there, and never may us come lice and her near. For, as a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. Or, as the heresies of men to leave are hated most of those they did to see. So thou, my surfeit and my heresy, will all be hated, or with the most of me. Or with all my powers address their love and might, to honor heaven and to be her knight. Help me! Help me, my Savior! Help me! Do thy best to pluck this crying serpent from my breast! <gasps> Hide me for pity! Oh, what a dream was here! My Savior, look how I do plead with fear! <coughs> if thou serpent ate my heart away, and thou sat smiling at his cruel prey, my Savior! What? Removed? Like Savior Lord! Gone? No sound? No word? Alack, where are you? <laughs> speak! Speak! And if you hear, speak of all loves! You swoon almost with fear. No? Well, then I perceive you are not nigh. Who has your death? Or you? I'll find immediately! Are we all met? Oh, right, right. Dear old marvelous place for our first. <coughs> Stream Patch should be our stage. This hall of our bridge should be our target house. We will do it in action. So we'll do it before the Duke! Oh, Peter Quinn's. What sayest thou, Billy Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Dizzy that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw his sword to kill himself. What's the ladies not abide? How would you do that? By making a parlous fear. I believe you're safe killing out of all of them. Not a win, for I have a device to make all well. <laughs> Write me a prologue and let the prologue see you say that we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better shirts, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom, the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. <laughs> huh. Well, we're going to have such a prologue. Be written eight and six. Uh, don't make it two more. Let it be written eight and eight. Um, will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? <laughs> I fear it. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in Goshulus, a lion among ladies. It is the most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living. And we ought to look, 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 look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell that she is not a lion. Oh, nay, you must name her name. And half her face must be seen through the lion's neck. And she herself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect. <laughs> ladies, or fair ladies, or I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would <laughs> entreat you <laughs> not to fear, not to tremble my life in yours. <laughs> If you think I come hither as a lion, it were a pity on my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a woman, as other women are. And there indeed, <laughs> let them name her name and tell them plainly she is snug the joy. Well, it shall be so. There are two hard things. One is to bring moonlight into the chamber, for fear must have this baby by moonlight. Doth the moonshine tonight we play our fight? Look, a coward, a coward! Look at the owl in Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! <laughs> yes, and doth shine that night. Why, then, may you leave a casement in the great chamber window where we play, open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must get, come in with a bush of thorn and a lan lantern and say he's come to. Disfigure, present the person of Moonshine. 
there is another thing. That is to bring a wall into the great chamber. For, says the story, Pyramus and Thisbe speak to each other through a chink in a wall. You could never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Ah, some man or other <laughs> must present wall. Let her have some plaster and some loam and some rough cast about her to signify wall. And let her hold her fingers up. Thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. <laughs> that may be the all's well. Come, my brother, son, sit down for a hershey pause. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break. So everyone according to their cue. What? You've been all fun, have we? Swearing here. So many of the cradle of the fairy queen. What? A play to war? I'll be an archer. An actor too, perhaps, if I see Carl. Pyramus, speak. This way. This way. Stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of odious sabers, odors, 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 sabers sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe, dear. Ah, a voice. Stay thou here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Must I speak now? I very must you. We must understand he's gone to see a sound he heard, and it's for return. Most radiant pyramids, most lily <laughs> white of you, of color like red rose on triumphant briar, most frisky juvenile and eat most lovely Jew, as truest, truest horse the ever never tired. I need me here in this mini stew. Wait, Ninus! Ninus! <laughs> speak, speak that later! Speak that to Pyramus! Say your key lines, cues, and all. Pyramus, enter your line is past! Just never tire! It's true, it's true as far as the yet will never tire. If I were fair, fair Thisbe, I were only thine. Ah! Oh, monstrous! Oh, strange! We are haunted! Red masters! Blood masters! Help! Oh, you are! Think you are about to run! Sometimes the horse goes! Sometimes the hound! You're caught! You're trapped! You're trapped! For who indeed 
He said, they're looking so foolish a bird. Who would give the bird the lie, though he cried? Goku! Never so. I pray. <laughs> Gentle mortal, sing again. <laughs> mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force, her force, doth move me upon the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, <laughs> methinks, <laughs> me <laughs> um, me Mr. Shoot have a little reason for that. <coughs> Yet to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more pity that some honest neighbors will not make them friends. <laughs> Nay, I can agree upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> not so either. For if I have wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own church. How would this wood do not desire to go? Thou shalt remain here. Whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit. Of no common rate, the summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing whilst thou oppressed flowers dost sleep, and I will purge thy mortal grossness, <laughs> so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go, peace blossom, cobweb moth, and mustard seed. <laughs> and I. Kind and courteous to this gentleman. <laughs> Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes, feed him with apricots and dewberries, purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bee, and for night tapers crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes. To have my love, to bed and to rise, and pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, and Hail, mortal! Hail! 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 <laughs> I cry your worship's mercy, hardly. I beseech you, uh, your worship's name? Cobweb. Ah, good master Cobweb. I shall desire you more acquaintance. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. <laughs> <laughs> I see your words are saying. Peace Blossom. Ah, good Master Peace Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mr. Squash, your mother, and to Master Peacock, your father. <laughs> <laughs> I shall desire you more acquaintance too, good Master Peace Blossom. <clears throat> your name, good Master Peace Master C. Ah, good Master <clears throat> Master C. <laughs> <laughs> I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like ox beef hath devoured many of your gentlemen of your house. I promise you, your kindred have they made my eyes water ere now. <laughs> I shall desire you more greatness too, good Master Carl. Mustard tea. Wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some divorce and justice. Tie up my lover's tongue. 